With more than 30 content packs, 13 producer packs, and more than 20,000 total sounds, the GarageBand Sound Library is the place to go if you want sounds for your projects. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's go. When you create a new song in GarageBand, you're presented with this screen where you can select which instrument you would like to play. But if you keep scrolling, you'll come across this one, the sound library, where we've got a heap of free sounds and loops and patches that you can use in your songs. To access it, you just tap on the sound library there. Let's take a look around and see what's on offer. At the top here, you'll always see the latest packs. At the time of recording this, it's the Dance Floor Rush and the Magnetic Imperfections. To access any pack, simply tap on on the name of it and we can preview by tapping the preview button. Pause again to stop there. And to download it, you hit the download button. Now I've already got this one, so I'm going to actually delete it. If you ever want to delete a pack, you can do that. Let's delete it. And there you go. It is gone. And this is what it will look like when you come in here to download a pack. You'll tap on the tile there. You'll hit the get button and it will start downloading that pack. As soon as it's downloaded, you're ready to go. Next up, we have all of our content packs. Now we can swipe to the side to go through all of the different packs, or we can tap on the see all button and get a big grid of them. Now, if there's one that takes your fancy, say you want to check out this electronic drummers pack, we can tap on that. We can once again preview it. And pause. We can delete the pack if we already have it, and there'll be a get button there if you don't already have the pack. The other thing you'll notice is down here, you've got a description. So you'll see all of the different things you get. This one has a bunch of new drummers, a bunch of new drum kits, and a bunch of new drummer loops. If we go to a different pack, something like the Backlight Bounce, you'll see that this one has Apple loops, drum kits, alchemy patches, and a live loops grid. So every pack has something different to offer, everything from world instruments, like Chinese instruments here, percussion, percussionists, 808s of course, and in, including some vocal melodies in the Vox Melodic Pack. So there really is something for everyone in these content packs. However, recently GarageBand added a new type of sound pack called a producer pack or a remix pack. And here you can find a whole bunch of really cool creators that have created some custom sounds and loops that you can use in your GarageBand project. Everything from Tosin Abassi and his amazing guitar work right through to Mark Ronson. And this one is actually incorporated with an Apple TV show called Watch the Sound that you can check out on Apple TV. Hashtag not sponsored, but it's a great show. So you can check out all of these loops by downloading the packs and they download in exactly the same way. Now, if you've been around GarageBand for a while, you might be thinking something's missing here. Where are my remix packs? We used to have Dua Leaper in here. We used to have other artists that we could remix their tracks. Unfortunately, they were for a limited time only. They're no longer available to remix. But from time to time, GarageBand do put out these remix projects that you can actually check out and play around with a real produced song. With nearly 50 different sound packs here, it can get hard to manage. Thankfully, we have a manage packs option. If we go to the top left here and tap on manage packs, you can see all of our installed packs here. And we've got five almost five gigabytes worth of them, 4,544 megabytes. And as we scroll down here, you'll see all the ones that we have installed. And if there's any you don't have installed, you'll see it here. And this is a quick way to come in here and just hit the get button. Rather than open up each individual pack, you can come in here. When you install GarageBand Fresh, you definitely want to do this. Rather than clicking around out here, just tap on the manage packs button and then come in here. You can also hit the edit button there and quickly delete out packs. If you really didn't want the Chromium Fray, you can tap delete and delete there and then hit delete and it will go away. Now, never fear deleting here. It doesn't mean that you'll lose that pack forever. You can always re-download these in the future. But there's an easy and convenient way to manage your sound packs. So that's great. Lots of sounds. But how do we use them? That's the important part of this, isn't it? So let's hit done in the top right corner and let's come across here to our keyboard instruments. So if we tap on the more sounds button here, the easiest way to find these is to go to recently downloaded and then you'll see we have all of the different packs here. So that watch the sound pack that we were playing around with before, if we tap on that one, you'll see that we've got a bunch of different instruments here. So any packs that have instruments will be here. Let's say we want to try these Mellotron flutes because they actually sound um, Amazing, let's play these. Yeah. <laughs> 
so we can start recording and using these instruments. So that's one way to use things in the pack, actually using the instruments. And uh, there's others. If you've added the World Instruments pack, for example, you'll have the World Instruments here and you can choose from the Pipa, the Erhu, the Koto or the Guzhang and uh, they can be an awful lot of fun to play. The other thing that you would have seen before that we get in the sound library packs is more drummers and drum sounds. So we can come in here to our drums, say we select uh, the more sounds here, and you can once again, if you go back to main categories, the way to find the ones that are in the packs is to go to recently downloaded, and then you can see here, here's all of our packs. So say we went to the toy box pack, and maybe we want the pots and pans, which is a fun little kit to play with, and now... we can play with that kit and record it in there. If we come back out here, the other thing you can do is actually check out the new drummers. So if we scroll across until we get to drummer and tap on drummer, if we tap in the middle here to change our drummer up, we can do the same sort of thing. Now this time we can't see which ones are actually in which sound library, but you've, any that you've added will actually drop into here. So for instance, Finn came in the songwriter pack. So if you wanna use Finn, we can add Finn in there. And now if we hit play, We've got some nice laid back Cajon style beats here with our drummer Finn. Another thing that you'll get in sound packs is alchemy synth patches. If we once again go to our keyboard and tap on more sounds, this time we're going to go back to our main categories, but we're actually going to tap on the alchemy synth, which is this one here. And once again, it gets a little hard here because we can't actually work out which pack it came from, but you'll see it'll actually tell you the pack over here. So if we go to say our leads here and we want to find something like this one here, a simpler time from the 8-bit legends pack we can tap on that one and then we can play in some 8-bit goodness using that synth sound and use all of these cool options to actually change everything up. If you're new to GarageBand, you want to learn more about using things like keyboard instruments and the Alchemy synth, check out the other videos linked in the description. One place where folks get a lot of enjoyment here in GarageBand is using Apple Loops and the sound packs have a heap of them. To get to them, we tap on the Loops icon in the top right corner here and make sure that you're here under Apple Loops and you'll see immediately as we scroll down, there are literally tens of thousands of these. You can jump around by tapping on the little letter icons here. You can favorite them by hitting the little heart there so you can come back and find them quickly. And you can even filter here by different instruments, genres, and descriptors as well. The way to find it by your sound packs is to hit the filter by button here and you'll see sound packs up the top. So if you've just downloaded the new sound pack, you want to see what's in it, come in here to your filter, tap on the all sound packs there. But instead of having all of them selected, say we've just grabbed the flex and flow kit, we can tap on that one, go back to filter by, go back to Apple loops. And now we've got just the different loops to add any of these. First of all, we can preview them by just tapping. And if we want to bring one in, we just tap and drag and drop it on a blank track. And now we've got this nice guitar sound to go along with our drums. Very cool. Some of the sound packs are specifically around things like guitars and audio recorder settings. Let's look at guitars first of all. If we jump in here and we go to more sounds under guitars, you'll see we've got the tone collections ones here. If we go to distorted, there's more of the tone collection there. If we went back and go into bass, there's the bass amp boutique. So if you've downloaded those particular sound packs, they have a bunch of different amp settings. You've also got the same thing here with the audio recorder. If we go to more sounds, you can see here under our main categories, we've got the Watch the Sound Pack, which has a heap of special Mark Rodson created sound presets, which could be really cool to use on vocals and guitars and other instruments that you're recording. So don't overlook the fact that we've got amp sims as well as audio recorder presets as part of some of these sound packs. And last but not least, Live Loops Grids. Yeah, a lot of these new sound packs that you'll download come with a Live Loops Grid. What is a Live Loops Grid, I'm glad you asked. If instead of being in tracks mode here, we tap on this one called Live Loops, we get this interface. And if you scroll across, you'll see that all of these have very familiar names. These are all of our different sound and producer packs. So if we wanted to say, check out this one, the Take A Day Trip producer pack, we can tap on that Live Loops Grid and it's gonna bring up a grid here that uses a lot of the sounds that are from that pack. So if you wanna get an idea of the different sounds 
in a pack, you can check this out. Now, the scope of this video isn't enough to tell you everything about live loops, but basically it's a way to sequence a, a sound just using all these different cells. So you can either hit a whole row and it will start playing. Or you can queue up individual sounds by using different sounds. And it's a great way for folks starting out with music production and creation to get a feel for how you would produce a song without having to go to the effort of selecting instruments and recording them in yourself. It's using a loop-based sequencer, kind of similar to an Ableton Live or something like that. So Live Loops Grid is a fun one. If you want to go back to your Tracks View afterwards, just tap in the top left there and go back to Tracks View and you'll be able to select other instruments to use. One final question to answer before we finish up, and that is... Are these free to use? What if I have a project, even a commercial project? I want to sell my music. I want to release it to the world with someone like DistroKid. Well, can I use these for free? The short answer is yes. Apple provide these and they say that yes, you can use these for free in any of your projects, including commercial releases. The caveat, the warning is that other people use them as well. So what you'll find is sometimes if you're using, say, something from the 8-Bit Legend sound pack, if you're using only one loop or one sample or one drum at a time, someone else may have used that in their project. And what you're not supposed to do is actually put content ID or copyright on that song, meaning that other people will get pinged on places like YouTube if they use it as well. Does that stop people doing that? No, it doesn't. So what is my recommendation here? Whenever you're using anything from the sound library or any sample library for that matter, make it your own. Change the tempo, change the speed, change the tones, change the plugins that you're using, change something, change the key signature. Make sure you're using multiple plugins or multiple sounds at the same time. Maybe even sounds across multiple different packs. You've got 20,000 to choose from, mix and match. And that way you will create something unique and completely different from what other people have created in the past. So yes, you can use it for free. Yes, you can use them for free commercially, but just be very cautious because other people are using them too and you want to make sure your music sounds unique and doesn't get pinged for any sort of content ID or copyright. So there you have it. Everything you wanted to know about the sound library here in GarageBand. I hope you found this one useful. It is really cool that Apple keep adding to this library of amazing sounds and that we have these great producers to learn from about how to create music. If you would like to learn from me about how to create music on your iPad or your iPhone using GarageBand or Logic Pro, then check out all the other videos we have linked in the description below. Hit the like button if you found this one useful and I'll see you next time.